Hey guys, welcome back to Unreal Labs. So we're doing that firewall configuration today. Actually, it's been a couple days. The work's been crazy, um, but we want to. I want to finish this series up so I can get back to the was us stuff that guys seem to like. Um, and I've requested some videos, so we need to finish this up. Um, so we're going to be configuring the HQ firewall today, then the remote firewall, and we've got some switch configurations uh, on both of these that we need to do. I didn't do a VLAN between the corp switch and the HQ firewall. What I decided to do was um, just make a routed interface. On the remote firewall, though, I actually did do a trunk between the switch and the fire and the and the remote firewall, and you'll see that later in this video. Uh, so I wanted to show you like two different ver two different ways of doing it, possibly, um, just because it's lab and let's just do some labbing. Um, so let's jump over to that to that switch real quick and just take a peek at kind of what that looks like. If I can log in here, there we go. Let's pop this out and that makes it a little bit easier for you guys to see it. I love this terminal. MOBA X term is awesome. All right, so let's do show interface status. Uh, let's include connected. You guys should be familiar with that command. And so here it is. So the inside is actually connected to this routed interface here, or this, the, excuse me, internal one on the 40 gate, on the HQ firewall 40 gate is connected to this FA1010. And I've made that a routed interface. So let's look what that looks like in the config. So uh, show run interface FA. 010. Um, and so what, how you do this is just, and I think I've covered this in a couple other videos, but you would just no switch port it. So we take it out of being a switch port and then we assign an IP address to it. Uh, and so this IP is 101060.2 on this interface. Uh, and then the internal one on the 40 gate is, is the one. And so I have, let's do a show IP route. So I'm forwarding all I made a default route that forwards all traffic unknown to the core switch up to the 40 gate. So that's how traffic is flowing. Um, so these three VLANs, if if it's you know internal and it knows it's going to route it. If not, it's going to sh uh, send that traffic uh, to the HQ firewall. And the HQ firewall is going to decide um, either I'm going to send it to the internet or I'm going to send it to possibly the remote firewall uh, into this subnet over here. Um, so let's jump into uh, the 40 gate here and let's um, let's check our interfaces real quick just to make sure. So I had to do some basic configuration just so I could get it in the lab. Um, on the remote one, I actually did the video on my MacBook, so the audio isn't super great. I'll try to smooth that over in, in editing, um, but as much as I can. But So I apologize for that, but I wanted to show like just the basic, like how to configure every interface. Uh, on there. So if we go to uh, interfaces here real quick, um, we've got this inside, just like I was saying, and that's that 101061, right, in a 30. Uh, we've we've got some services available, HTTPS, SSH, ping. On the outside, I've configured, uh, it's still a private IP, but I'm just faking in the sense of like the ISP would give us this, right? So we're manual or DHCP if that's how they assign it. Uh, that wouldn't be so stellar, though, um, especially for IPsec tunneling, because um, you don't want that IP to change, that peer address to change. So um, this has been configured, right? All that looks good. So I've just uh, got outside. The roll's a WAN. We'll hit OK on that. So that looks OK. I want to show, uh, you know, when these FortiGates do come up, this will be part of the video down the road here, but uh, the internal VLAN switch um, is the way it, so interface this internal one through five uh, that's up here one through five are all kind of put into this virtual switch um, I don't really like that so you can actually pull these interfaces out Cisco does the same thing I think on their like 5505 series and tens or something they used to have you can pull those interface out interfaces out and then um, use them for however you want you know you don't have to use this VLAN switch um, we'll leave that out for right now. It doesn't matter. Um, so we're, we've got that. So we've got a couple things we need to do. We need to make some, we need to make some routes that would go back and I'm not going to do OSPF. That's a, maybe a different line. It'd be kind of cool to do that in here, but we're just going to, for a basic setup, we're going to do some static routes back from the 40 gate to the 
HQ core switch because we need to we need to get traffic back there and allow those devices to 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 get to the to the uh, the forty gate. So let's go to network and we'll go to static routes. And I have one already in here because that's how I'm actually accessing it. So let's let's just duplicate that and let's do ten ten one oh one. That's a network we need, right? That's engineering. And the default gateway is going to be ten ten sixty dot two, right? Because we're pointing it back at the uh, it should actually fill this in because it's on that interface. And we'll hit OK. So that's our first static route. Then we'll need the server VLAN, right? So 10, 10, 100, 0, 24. And I would probably label these, but um, yeah, I'm not going to do that right now. But I am a fan. I did comment that one. I am a fan of commenting. Um, Actually, let's just do it because I am a freak on the commenting. So this is engineering. I do like if I could spell. Oh, there we go. And we'll call this one server VLAN 100. All right, so those are both created. So that's good. So now we should be able to ping. Let's just go over to the server. Log into it real quick. And we should be able to ping 1060.1, which is the internal interface of the 40 gate. So that's available. And we'll move back to the workstation. So the next thing we need to do is make a policy uh, object here that allows our traffic through. And there's an existing one already. Just the default config is this in, that internal switch I was talking about. But since we pulled interface one out, we have really no way of getting to that. And it's actually on a different uh, IP scheme anyway. So we need to actually create a new one. Uh, and then we'll call it inside to outside. So the incoming interface, right, is going to be inside one or internal one. And then outgoing is going to be WAN1. Where are you, WAN1? So the source, the source networks, we could say all if we wanted. Um, I'm not going to do that. We could just, I did, I've already created VLAN 100 and 102 already in the config, but we could just add these three. But what I'd like to do is actually kind of grab them and put them in like an address group so it just makes it easier to read. Um, and how you would do that if you were creating one up is you'd hit create and then address group. And then if you, uh, let's just do test here. And then we'd select members. And if you already have the members available, you could select them. If not, you can hit create again and then the address group or the address and then create that uh, subnet or IP, whatever you wanna put in there or service. Um, so we'll hit cancel on that. Um, so, cause I've, since I've already had those configured. <clears throat> So on the destination, we're going to choose all, right? Because we want to just blast it out to the internet. So we don't care. We're like, oh, see you later. And then services, um, we might want to lock this down a tad. We might want to say like HTTP, HTTPS, DNS. Um, since this is a lab, I'm going to do all. But you can actually create your own. Let's just say you had a special service on, you know, maybe, you know, 8080 or something uh, that you, you want to allow out. If you were tightening things up, you could do that. Um, we don't need to do that right now. So I just wanted to show it. So yeah, all we should go. I, I want to have some more of these 40 gate configurations. I'm just trying to speed it up a tad. This video has been taking me forever. So I gotta get some coffee. Work has been crazy and I'm, I've been lacking on video content. I apologize. So we do need to configure a NAT. So we're going to, we're going to NAT from the WAN one, right? To the inside. Let's just imagine that WAN one has a publicly routed in, uh, IP. I mean, you can NAT it without two privates, but um, I just want you to imagine like a traditional setup. And then you would select your security profiles. If you, if you had some, currently there's no licensing, so that'll stop my traffic. So I'm going to leave those off. And then you choose your logging, um, you know, maybe no logging. Maybe you want to log security events. Maybe you want to log all traffic, which would be crazy, but you could do that. Um, it's not a bad thing for troubleshooting, but it's going to fill your, your hard drive up, especially on these littler firewalls and if you had a lot of traffic. 
Actually, let's, we'll do all sessions just so if we need it for the IPsec tunnel for right now. And then we'll enable the policy. And so that's enabled. So now we have this on the inside interface to the outside interface, and this is our policy that would follow. I did want to show that there is by sequence. So these policies do follow a sequence and we can get into that in some more advanced videos. Um, there is some tricks to that and some troubleshooting that you might want to know. Um, if you're trying to maybe block traffic or deny traffic. Um, so let's test our internet. I know it's going to be broken, but I just want to see if you guys picked up what I missed. Um, so we can ping the inside interface. Let, that looks good. Let's uh, let's try to ping uh, the outside interface there. That would be the ISP, and that looks good. Let's see if we get Google here. Oh, look at that. We don't we don't know where Google's at. So the the firewall knows where where 172.16 because it is on that interface, the outside interface, but it doesn't have a way of like in its table, in its routing table, we forgot to make on purpose, by the way, the static route here. We forgot to make a static route out, right? To our default gateway uh for all traffic. So we're gonna leave all these zeros. And then that'll be, this is going to be the ISP's IP, and it's on outside WAN 1. Uh, and then we can just call this DG. We'll hit OK. And so we've made our, our default route. And now if we slide back over to the server, we should be able to ping Google, no problem. So that is basically, um, and we can test that here on uh, Workstation 2. All good there too. So that's a basic configuration. We don't have much, we, we can definitely go through some more settings, but I'm trying to just make this, you know, some a basic setup. Uh, you're, you know, you'd want to change your passwords. You, you know, you're going to want to, you know, make some, maybe some syncing on uh, what DNS servers you're using. Um, if you have licensing, you're going to want to use the 40 gate uh, DNS servers, of course. Uh, but there's all kinds of settings, you know, in here that you 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 might want to set up. And if you if you're using FortiGate switching or APs, you'd you'd want to come into your security fabric, um, you know, and and make some of those adjustments, you know, if you, if you needed them. Um, let's go to status. All right, so we are looking good. So we now will jump over to the. Uh, I can't see over my big mic. Um, we're going to jump over to the remote firewall setup and that switch. And then we will, um, kind of continue the video. And at the end, we will, we will start our IPsec tunnel. And that sounds like fun. All right. See you guys here in a second. All right. Let's configure the remote side of, uh, this 40 gate or this Unreal Corp network. Um, same kind of 40 gates and FG, I think 81F. So let's log into it. It's been factory reset. So 192.168.1.99 is the default addressing there. Um, and I just was logged in. That's why I didn't prompt for passwords. Um, so <clears throat> like I said, it's, it's or excuse me, 61F, not an 81F. Um, so I don't have, like you said, the, you saw it on the other one, I don't have the uh, security packages enabled or paid for. So um, those are disabled. We can talk about them. Well, let's jump into on the network tab here to interfaces. Um, we need to pull out um, internal one. I want to I want to pull this internal one outside of this VLAN switch here. Um, I don't want them all all five interfaces to be just you know configured um, as a as a switch. Um, I'm going to leave four of them that way, but I, I didn't want one totally out. So, and if you were doing like HA or something, you you might want to, but um, let's let's hit this X button here and that'll pull internal one out of uh, this VLAN switch and we'll hit okay. And we should see internal one here now in our physical interfaces. So we gonna open that up and I'm gonna just configure this as a LAN just so it's here. And I'm not gonna, currently configure any IP addresses on it. <clears throat> I'll hit OK on that. What I want to do is create a new interface. 
And I'm going to just call this inside, or actually VLAN 100. Let's call it VLAN 100. And this will just be inside VLAN 100. And the reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to trunk this connection to the Cisco switch. And we're going to use this FortiGate in future videos to um, have the FortiGate actually do the routing in the sense of like, let's say you don't have a layer three switch or something and you want to, or maybe you just want east west. Uh, Policies that you're able to do on the firewall because it's going to be a small network. We're just going to, I want to show this side of that instead of, you know, the HQ that's using a, a layer three switch for that. So we'll, the type will be VLAN. Um, the interface we need to, to tie this on is not that internal switch that I'm, that I'm currently on. I'm going to actually select this internal one here. And then the VLAN, VLAN ID number is going to be 100. And then I'm going to configure our IP address 1020.100.1 slash 24. And then it's actually going to create this object here for us uh, so we can we can utilize it in our policy and object. So it's going to make this object for us. Um, now I want administrative access on this, of course. So I'm going to do HTTP and then FMG access. And then if you have, uh, you know, 40 gate APs or other switches, um, you might want this security fabric enabled. Um, and then I want ping enabled and SSH. So I currently don't have a server. We currently don't have a server in this remote network. So we need to actually slide this over just temporarily. We're, you know, I'll get rid of this once uh, we bring our Windows server up, but I'm just going to add a temporary... DHCP server, and we don't need a lot of IP space, so um, we'll leave it like at that. And then the net mask is correct. Um, default gateway, same as interface IP, which is just referring to uh, the 100.1 here. And then DNS, um, you can set that up as the same as the system DNS, or you can specify it. I'm just going to specify real quick just to make sure uh, things are good there. Now, if we do want the internal DNS to work eventually, but yeah, this is where we're going to go with it. All right. And so device detection, that's kind of neat. If you, like you said, you, it'll pick up things that are connected directly to uh, that port. So we'll, I just we'll leave that enabled. Um, and then this will just be, inter I'm just going to leave a comment here inside interface VLAN 100. So now we have this uh, inside VLAN 100 created. Um, I am still connected right now to this VLAN switch, but we need to move on to WAN 1, which will be our WAN port. So I'm just going to call this outside. And the roles WAN uh, estimated bandwidth, you could definitely put that in there for some QoS, but uh, we'll hit manual. And I know the IP address, let's just say that uh, our ISP gave us this IP, which I hope not. This is just an internal VLAN in my in my lab. The other, of course, HQ is 15. We'll make this 16. And we're just going to kind of use that fake space there um, for IPsec tunnel in the future. So I, I, so I don't want... Um, any kind of administrative access enabled. I'm going to leave ping since this is a lab, but I would normally turn that off. And we are good to go. All right, so that is configured now. So if we click on DNS, we can see it's it's going to say use 40 yard servers. I'm going to change that. Um, just because, like I said, I don't have a licensing on this, so I'm not sure if those would work. They probably would be fine, but I'm going to get those changed. Now we're going to dump into uh, policies and objects, and we're going to go over to the firewall policy. And by default, you get this, like, internal to outside, you know, everything, everything, you know, Pretty much everything's enabled. What I need to do is we need to create a new policy for our VLAN 100. So we'll hit create, create new, and this will be inside. I'm just going to enable it inside, outside, or inside. Uh, let's do uh, 
Beeline 100. Outside. Or let's do uh, land one. Make it easier. So our incoming interface, right, is going to be for clients, is going to be that VLAN interface, not internal one. We're going to use this inside VLAN 100. So that's where the traffic's going to come from. The outgoing side, of course, is going to be WAN 1 outside. And then we have the source. And we should have had that, um, since we, we created that inside one, we should have that address group here in our list. So we do. So VLAN 100 address. So that covers the whole subnet. So we'll add that in there. And then on destination, of course, we want everything. Um, maybe you don't, but uh, for this one to get full internet, we need to have all. And the schedule, we're not going to worry about that, but that's going to be active always. Now, services can be uh, kind of how you want to cut that up. I've seen a lot where they, you know, they guys will just click all and call, call it a day. But personally, I do like to create you know, this is a lab environment, so we, we're definitely going to probably just choose all. But I just want to kind of go over this. What I would do is kind of create a service group um, and maybe call it, uh, you know, outside, you know, I don't know, outside uh, broad or something, outside protocols. And then you would want to make members. And I would say, like, you know, you want HTTP, right? You want uh, HTTPS. You, you know, you're probably going to need some FTP. Uh, I don't know if you'd be sending HTTP, you know, SMTP, but maybe, maybe you are. So we'll, we'll add those. Um, personally, I'd, I'd leave those off unless you really need it. And, you know, we want to have ping so guys could ping out and DNS. Um, and if you, you can definitely customize this trace route, just so if you had some connectivity things, maybe you do have some, you know, RDP, SSH, you know, going out. So what this does then at this point is like you're just limiting how many protocols are you're going to let out the network. So that way, if you know something's running riding on a like a undefined port like eighty eighty or something and trying to get out uh, or calling something at eighty eighty, like it's going to get blocked. So you know, hopefully you'd get a call or you'd see your logs that something's kind of off using some kind of uh, you know off port. And then you can actually, if it's it's valid, you know, you add it to your service group or a different service group if you need it. So I'm just going to hit all there for, since this is a lab environment, but I just want to cover that. Like, you know, you should definitely, you know, think about what, you know, protocols or services are going outside your, your network. So uh, inspection mode, we'll do flow based, not proxy for right now. And then uh, definitely a NAT, right? Um, Cause we want a NAT between VLAN 100 and WAN one's uh, outside IP address. Um, currently, I'm not going to select any security protocol files, but you definitely would want to, you know, if you had something and then you'd want to customize these to your needs, um, you know, as you go through like your IPS. The problem is that since I don't have a license, if I enable these, I believe, uh, you know, traffic will stop. So uh, I will have to buy the last license eventually for the lab, but, you know, YouTube uh, is what it is. So we're going to enable this policy. So we'll have this, uh, this enabled. Oh, and let me cover this here, logging. So, <clears throat> you know, if you if you do all sessions, it's going to grab like every session that, that's created. And that might be something you'd want to do maybe right off the bat just to see your traffic, verify everything's working. You just want to make sure you, you kind of maybe pull that back to security events so you're not filling up a local disk on the, on the FortiGate. Not that it's not actually a fairly good sized disk. It's just um, you might you might not eat all, all sessions, um, especially for random traffic. Um, and we'll hit OK. So that should create our policy there. And then what we can do also is just, uh, I'm going to just set this to disabled on the internal to outside WAN 1. We don't need that policy. You could actually delete it if you want, but I'm, I'm just going to leave it uh, disabled. Um, so let's roll over to uh, back up to network, actually. So we need a couple other things here. We need a static, we need a default route, uh, you know, to the ISP's gateway. Because currently, like, we don't have a way of, like, I don't know where all is. So let's create that. So it's going to be destination, I don't know. So zeros all the way across and zeros for the subnet mask. Now the default gateway um, is, I know this, right? So, but your ISP would send this to you or you'd get it through DHCP. 
and that interface is going to be uh, WAN 1. Where are you, WAN 1? There you are. And we'll hit OK. Now, on the other video on the HQ, we actually had to set up a couple other um, static routes back the other way right to the to the layer three switch because we had to say like hey if you know for the firewall to see you know 10 10 100 or 10 10 uh 101 it needs it needed your route to be pointed back at that uh, routed interface on the on the layer three switch um since we're all all the devices are going to be in vlan 100 on the remote site we don't need that so everything's just going to be you know sitting in this vlan 100. now if you add some you know something else behind your network or behind your switch or whatever you you know make sure that you yeah you'd need to uh add some more routing so and we don't need that so currently so yeah that that'll finish up just this side um once these two are communicating i'm going to go plug this into lab i'll i'll be back here in a second and then we can test some internet on that hyper-v cloud um, and then we'll move into you know creating some ipsec tunnel or creating an ipsec tunnel between uh hq and uh, the remote site. All right, so we've got uh, the remote firewall uh, with a basic configuration for north-south access to the internet. Um, we did kind of switch it up. We're going to add this VLAN 100 in here. That's what we did on that interface to do some east-west routing because we I, I want to do some kind of more fancy things in the security side of this. Um, <clears throat> we need to configure this layer two switch we just need to create a vlan 100 do some basic uh configurations for passwords just so you guys see it again um and then we'll connect a ubuntu box to the switch uh, we need to make a trunk port too that uploads uh, or excuse me not uploads but uh, is the connection to the remote firewall that way um, we can add more vlans you know over time like let's say we had a one of the like vlan 101 we need to have that trunk port and play right on the switch so we can it can uh, move between or route between those VLANs, uh, just like the video we had on router on a stick, exactly the same concept there. So let's jump into this. Um, there's nothing configured on this guy yet. He's pretty, pretty basic. So let's just do our host name. Um, we'll do switch one remote. I'm going to pull this out just so I can kind of get this better on the screen here, a little higher up. Uh, let's move it a little bit more. There we go. That looks a little better. Okay. So let's do VLAN 100 um, and let's name it uh, data. That's fine. Um, exit that. We don't need, like I said, we're not configuring a layer three interface. It's just a layer two VLAN. Um, so let's go into line um, VTY zero and four. Um, and then uh, password, we will just use my default Cisco login. Um, line con zero, password Cisco login. And let's test that before we, I should have ended there, but let's test that before I save it. All right, now we need to do the enable password. Um, level 15, all right. And then I'm super secure, so password Cisco. We can exit this. There we go. Almost thought I locked myself out. Whoops. All right, so that looks good. That looks uh, just some basic. And let's do uh, let's service password encryption. That's going to kind of obfuscate, um, not kind of, it's going to. It's going to just encode those those passwords here. Let's write that real quick. Yeah, there we go. So the enable password is just not showing up in there, and we shouldn't see it in, um, you know, line and VTY. So let's do show interface status. I just want to see what interfaces are actually up right now. Um, and let's do it actually show interface status and then let's pipe it uh, connect in. 
All right, so let's jump into gig 101. Or interface gig 101, excuse me. All right, so gig 101 is actually um, the inside interface on the firewall. So let's add a description here just so we can keep this, this correct here. Um, inside firewall VLAN 100. <clears throat> actually, I don't want VLAN 100. I'm just going to put trunk. There we go. So this is going to be switch part, switch port mode or switch part trunk, excuse me, encapsulation.1q because we need to trunk up to the firewall and then switch port mode trunk. So that'll put that interface into a trunk. And then let's go, I have the other interface configured at gig 102. And this is the connection actually to this Hyper-V box behind me. Um, I could actually make, we could make that a trunk and then I can show you that in the, in the Hyper-V how you would specify, you know, um, what VLAN um, you want the virtual machine to be on. Just to make this video simpler and I'll not stretch for an hour and a half, um, we are just going to configure uh, this just on VLAN 1. So switchboard mode access, switchboard access, VLAN 100. And then we'll show interface status, include connected. And we should see both of those kind of in that. Uh, well, actually, let's, we need, we did forget something. Let's interface gig 102. We, I hate not putting descriptions on stuff. So this will be Hyper-V uh, host. So this is outside. I, so we have the HQ actually running in this VMware workstation uh, environment. And then we have this uh, Hyper-V box that I was able to obtain. Um, with 2022 server, and that's going to be like kind of the remote network. That's how I'm kind of faking these together, or not faking it, but virtualizing them. So in, into the lab, just to explain. Um, all right, we'll write that, and let's uh, let's move over to that Hyper V box here. Um, All right, so we're over on this Hyper-V box. So this, we uh, open, uh, we're, we're, we, eh, well, excuse me if I can speak today. So let's open Hyper-V Manager, and I'll have a video on this eventually. Um, we'll get farther into some Hyper-V stuff. Whoops, Tools, Hyper-V Manager. I've got a couple little test boxes here just to play around. So Ubuntu 1, um, oh, do settings on that. Uh, this is the network adapter that um, currently it's using. This is what I was talking about. We could have made it a trunk on this VMNet 2 network that I created, and we could have just said, "Hey, you know, you're on you're on VLAN 100," um, and that would have tagged that for it. Currently, the whole port, the whole this whole network adapter here, this Hyper-V switch, is just stuck in uh, VLAN 1 on the remote location. Just just an FYI. So that's how that's going to look. So let's uh, let's start this guy up. Let's take a sip of coffee because you know we all need coffee or tea or beer, whatever you prefer. All right, so let's log into this guy. And I just want to see if we get, we did configure that DHCP server, so I should have an IP. We'll see. This will be the test. Uh, whoops. If config, if I can spell it right. And look at that. All right. So, yeah, there's 10, 20, 100, 101. Um, so we should be able to open this Firefox here. And HTTPS 10, 10, whoops. NumLock 10, 10, 10, 20. 100.1, and that should take us to the 40 gate firewall. Uh, 
and we are live on the 40 gate firewall. So we have connectivity all the way through from, from this Hyper-V host, this that or Ubuntu box sitting on a Hyper-V host, going through a layer two switch, touching the physical uh, 40 gate firewall. So we know our communication is good, our, our setup's good. Let's check some internet here. This will be the test. Uh, let's do some Bing, I guess, see what happens. It's probably gonna falter out here. So just my apologies. So I connected that the WAN on the firewall is actually connected to another switch that I have in lot. I just wanted to point this out because, you know, we, you know, we all make mistakes. So I should have cleared this config, but it is. So this guy is sitting in this VLAN 666. So I need it just to sit in one. So let's just make that change real quick. Uh, config T interface gig 11. This is like a, I'm using this kind of middle switch here for, for connectivity between both, both networks. Um, so switch port access VLAN one, and that should help us. So uh, let's do show interface status and click connected. Should be fine now on 11. Yes, it is. I'm going to just write that. So I have it and we'll pop back over to my Hyper-V cluster here, or my Hyper-V host, and we will do a ping. Hopefully we'll get something. Maybe, maybe. All right, so we got some more problems. We got a troubleshoot here. All right, so just want to make sure I have, I did that configuration. The whole port should be in VLAN 100, which it is. Let's, uh, let me move back over to lead here real quick. I'll be right back. Let me just figure out what's going on. I'll be right back. So I think it just took a second. I think I, I should have had checked a spanning tree port fast was enabled. So it just took a second, it took like 20 seconds for the port to, to roll out. Um, always fun in videos, you know, um, I try not to do these before I film, which is kind of probably stupid, but, um, yeah, I, it could take me forever. I already have a hard time getting videos out. So, um, some things I just do on the fly. Uh, I hope you guys, um, accept my apologies, but yeah, we're good there. So, and what I'm doing here right now is just, uh, I'm in the firewall on this 40 gate. You can actually get to the CLI here and then I'm just did an execute. You got to run this execute command first and then ping. Um, and let's just see if we can get to Google. I'm not quite sure on that one. Yep, we're good there. Okay, so that looks awesome. So we have DNS, so we should be now able to get to like Bing. And we are. So yeah, there's that side. So now we'll jump into um, the last part of this video is where we'll tie in some IPsec. We'll tie in that IPsec tunnel between HQ and remote. And then we will test some connectivity to this Linux box um, into the HQ side. And then of course we want to test HQ to remote. Um, so like I said, a pretty basic setup here. Um, not much not much you have to do for you know a pretty small side office but we will uh i like you said the next videos will be i don't know why i say like i said all the time so slap me when i say that um so we're going to add some policies in here for some east west routing um doing some video doing some vlans or maybe we want to add a policy to say um on top of this or before this, because it, it, it goes down in steps that we'd say, maybe the server needs to be tightened up and just like, we're only gonna allow like HTTPS uh, or secure connections out, or maybe just SSH, we'll do some of that testing too. So um, I will see you on the next side here. All right, so we're back to part four. I'm gonna grab a cup of coffee. This is the IPsec tunnel uh, part of this video. I'm gonna start on the HQ side. <clears throat> and then we'll configure the remote side. Uh, so let's let's jump over to uh, the 40 gate and let's 
go into VPN and we're going to select IPsec tunnels. You could actually just click the wizard if you'd like, but um, we'll hit create new and then IPsec tunnel. And then we're going to, you know, we've got some options here, right? We're going to set, we want site to site. So this 40 gate to the remote 40 gate in this lab environment. Uh, so we'll just call this uh, Unreal IPsec. I'm just going to leave that lowercase. I kind of like most things in my config, lowercase. Um, and we're going to do no NAT between the sites, so I don't need NATing between them. Um, and the remote device type is actually going to be a FortiGate, so we're FortiGate to FortiGate. Cisco th does change this config a little bit. Um, if you have some questions about that or you're, you're running into issues, that that I can I can possibly help you with that one. Um, it took me a minute to figure out that with the Cisco config. Maybe we'll do a lab on that one. So this this looks good. Let's hit next. Um, and so we're going to need the remote IP address, and that on the remote IP or the remote uh, forty gate that's one eight seventy two sixteen. 1.16 uh, given to us right by Aaron, uh, you know the the Unreal Labs ISP. So pre pre shared key is going to be one two three four. Um, well maybe we can't do that. So five six that'll work. This is super weak and you need to choose something you know longer than this. But since we're in a lab, that's fine. Um, and this key we need you need to make sure you write it down and have it exact because you need the same identical key on the other side, right? They need to match. So we'll be doing the pre-shared key there. So we'll hit next. <clears throat> so the local interface for HQ is going to be inside one. And it's going to have some local subnets that we're going to add. And we're going to add, I'm going to add all the subnets that we have uh, over here. So 10, 100, dot zero slash 24, 10 dot 10 dot 100 dot zero slash 24 and then of course we need 10 10 102 dot slash 24 and then the remote subnets are going to be different right so if we look back on this on this configuration that's 10 20 100 so that's the that's the remote subnet we're going to be adding to this config here so 10 20 0 is that 0 0 I can't remember there's 100 sorry you want to make sure these are right. <laughs> Perfect. And then we're not going to share. We don't need to route their their traffic through our internet or anything like that. So we're <clears throat> we're good there. We can hit next, and then it's going to create some settings for us. So it's the phase one interface. It's going to name some default objects for us. That's the benefit of this wizard. It kind of does some of that for you, but. I highly recommend you get familiar with the CLI on how this works and some troubleshooting. We can do those in different videos. This is just to get this IPsec tunnel established. And it should be should be pretty basic. Uh, so it's going to create a static route. It's going to black hole some traffic. That way it doesn't come out our internet or somewhere else. Um, and then it's going to make some uh, local to remote policies uh, in the policies and objects here. So if we hit create, let's let that go. <clears throat> now it's showing it's down because the remote side we haven't configured that yet. But if we look now, if we go back to IPsec tunnels, uh, we should see, you know, it's inactive, but we should see some references in the config. Let's go to our policy and objects here. And we should see inside, yep, to Unreal IPsec. And so it's made this policy here for us which is good. So the local side of, of the subnets, all the subnets we had, and then the remote side is that 1020. So that looks good. And then if, let's just look at our um, static routes. <clears throat> Excuse me again. So we've got a destination of the remote and then what interface it's going to be using. Um, there's no gateway, right? And then there's the IPsec remote and then the black hole to kind of dump traffic that's not um, you know, associated with any kind of policy. All right, so that looks good. So now let's, uh, I'm going to pause. Let's jump over to the remote side because it's magic and I, I can, they're both in this room and, uh, we'll, we'll do that side. All right. So I connected to the, uh, Hyper-V server where this Ubuntu machine is, is living, which is, um, on the remote side of that, um, Let's go back over here to our 
Hopefully our drawing is still good and not squished too bad. Um, yeah, so we're over here now on this Hyper-V, on the site where this Hyper-V server is. Uh, and we'll make some configurations there. I know that got squished, I apology, uh, apologize. I just want to make sure I, I do have internet. Let's make some things sure things are working. So Bing is up and running um, on this. And let's just ping Google so we can make sure, you know, that is functioning. So we do have internet. I do like just to test those things. So I've logged into the, the remote 40 gate. And now we need to, to do the same kind of thing. So we're going to go to VPN, IPsec tunnels. And we're going to create a new IPsec tunnel. And I called it Unreal IPsec. So I'm kind of just trying to match policies, right? So site to site, or match configurations as much as I can. So site to site, uh, no net between sites, and it's going to be 40 gate to 40 gate, right? And so this should just be the reverse of HQ, right? So the remote IP address um, is going to be 172, whoops, 172.16, 1.15. That's the. Um, remote IP address of the of the HQ firewall. And then we need to enter that pre-share key, one, two, three, four, five, six. So that should match up there with what we had before. So those keys need to be good or the same. So local interface is gonna be inside. And then our local subnet is exactly that 10, uh, 20, 100, zero. But our remote subnets are going to be 10, 10, 100, that's 0 slash 24. 10, 10, 101 0 slash 24. 10, 10, 102 0 slash 24. And then I think it did slip in that uh, 10, 10, 60, 0 slash uh, 30. I think that was in there. Uh, so that looks good. That's that was that little routed, um, little routed network. <clears throat> and then internet, internet, excuse me, internet access none, and we'll hit next. And then like it, like just like before, it's going to set up our phase one for phase two, our our static routes, our black holes, and we'll hit create. So that all looks good. So I just want to make sure that our policies are all in place. Yep, so there's our uh, inside to outside and then inside to the Unreal IPsec. Let's look at routing here. And we've got those two configured. And currently, like this is this default route should be fine, right? Because it's just like if I don't know where 10, 10, um, 100 is, it's going to it's going to try to drive to this IPsec and get this tunnel set up. All right, so we've got a pretty good configuration. So I'm, I'm just going to just fire off a ping on this remote side. Um, let's just try to ping 10, 10, 100, uh, 1. That's the VLAN uh, 100 interface. Oop, look at that. So we've it's already have, has come up, so that looks awesome. Um, that's something we want to see. Let's, uh, let's ping. Let's ping uh, 10. That's the server. That looks nice. All right, that looks good. Let's check out our VPN, or our, excuse me, our IPsec tunnel. We can go to this VPN uh, category. We should go to IPsec tunnels and it should show up. And I believe we can actually click on it and it should give us some statistics on, you know, what's it, what is it doing? I apologize for this window being so tight, but here's our incoming outgoing. Phase one, phase two, select, you know, phase one's up, phase two selectors are up. So pretty, pretty basic, but easy, especially with 40 gate to 40 gate. Um, didn't take much to get that tunnel up and running. So let's let's flip over to the other side real quick. And I'm going to just try to fit to window size. I want to kind of clear up that that view here real quick. Sometimes it gets kind of squished when I when I move screens. So on the HQ firewall, we should see IPsec tunnels, and this should show up and up too. And then we can 
view its statistics if we want. And it's sending traffic. So let's try to ping, um, what was that Linux box IP? I wonder what I, what I set that for. Excuse me. All right, so it's 101. So I hope I hope the firewall is off on that thing, but we will see. Apologies. Yep, so we're good to go. So we're pinging the Ubuntu box. So we've got communication both ways. Um, sorry for the little snafu there. It's kind of crazy with all my toolbars rolling. <clears throat> it's always easier to do this. I should just switch this to, to multiple screens. So... Let me try to uh, full screen this real quick, uh, just so we can get back here, make it look presentable. And we'll try the DC just because we're here. So we should be able to ping 101 too. So 10, 20, 100.101, and it's pinging fine too. So yeah, that, that concludes the setup here of which is pretty awesome so we're almost finished the next step is we just need to make that remote site dc and the sales guy uh mike johnson so i'll, I'll hurry up and make that video if you have questions or comments on this video i'm gonna i'll add the timestamps for each one of these things um if you guys are interested in the cli of an of the ipsec tunnel i can do that too um but i want to tear this configuration down first before we do that but I appreciate you guys watching and uh, yeah, I'll have some more videos shortly. Thanks again.